You tell lies like that, you won't go to heaven when you die. I heard plenty. I listen when people talk. Not like you, gab, gab, gabbling all the time, won't let nobody get a word in edgewise. And that's why I know what people are saying. And you don't. People tell lies all the time. But I think you tell them more than anybody else. I know what you've done to that little boy. Hello, lovely people. Uh, thank you for joining me again. Uh, I have a fun one for you guys today. It's uh, The Bad Seed from 1956. Um, and a friend of mine uh, watched this, I think. I mean, I guess it would have been last year. And um, she was like, Hermione, have you seen this? <laughs> and I'm like, no. And she was like, you're going to love it. So um, I guess I wanted to just give her a little shout out for recommending it. So The Bad Seed is like a, it's a drama, horror, thriller type of film. And it's essentially kind of a two-hander between two characters. So Nancy Kelly plays uh, a mother called Christine. Um, Nancy Kelly was a child star who went on to do bigger things in her teens. Um, she was in a film... Uh, Jesse James in 1939, Stanley and Livingston, and then she went on to have a long career doing film, TV, theater. And she was actually the director's first choice for this, uh, and she was chosen over um, some other big name actresses who kind of wanted the role. Um, she's also joined by Patty McCormack, who plays Rhoda, uh, an eight-year-old, um, an eight-year-old girl. And her daughter in the film. So, Patty McCormack more recently uh, was in Frost Nixon, Dirty John, and several episodes of General Hospital. So she's another one that's had quite a long career. But this um, child star role is one of her um, most famous. Um, and it's a film that's directed by Mervyn Leroy, which um, is kind of funny because he did um, The Wizard of Oz in 1939. Um, and I just find that kind of funny because this film's quite different, um, <laughs> in tone and that kind of thing. So, uh, he also did Gypsy for those of you who, uh, know that film. So basically the bad seed is about Christine, who is uh, a loving mother, happily ensconced in family life, but she starts to notice that something is a little bit off about her eight year old daughter, Rhoda. So uh, things start to come to a head when her husband is away on a military assignment and a little boy at her daughter's school is killed. And there's just something a bit off um, about the whole situation. And so the question starts to come up, is Rhoda uh, a little eight-year-old psychopath who murders to get her own way? And... Um, yeah, so the film does have other characters. Um, there's a neighbor, there's a teacher, there's obviously the, hu the husband and father. But I feel like the key players are these two, and um, they're kind of circling each other. Like, Rhoda doesn't want to get in trouble, and Christine kind of wonders, like, you know, can her can it be true? Is her daughter, like, what's going on? Um, so it's, it's kind of a funny one. It's based on a f novel that came out in 1954 by William March. And then the novel was made into a stage play the same year by Maxwell Anderson. And then the stage play was adapted into a screenplay <laughs> and the film came out in 56. So, um, it was something that kind of, I mean, I find this kind of interesting because we often look back at the 50s and think like, oh, it was this idyllic time and everything was a certain way. But um, films like The Bad Seed kind of show that there was this uneasiness um, where something that looks perfect and looks perfectly innocent hides um, hides a dark secret. So that kind of the 50s, if you chip below the surface, everything's not happy families um so yeah in its own time the year it came out it was a huge success um possibly the biggest of that year or one of the biggest for and Warner Brothers made a lot of money off it so 
The budget was one million, and they made four point one million off it, and it got four Academy Award nominations and two Golden Globes. Um, so, uh, Patty McCormack was the actress that played uh, Rhoda on stage, and then was cast into the film. And from what I could find out, um, Nancy was as well, which is kind of interesting. Um, Patty McCormack at the time had this real uh, cute, blonde, very, like, almost like a little girl in a storybook kind of a look. And she's styled with these little um, blonde pigtails and little bows and these kind of doll-like dresses. Um, And it's just such a (laughs) so good her performance is really good um she basically made Rhoda famous as one of the most chilling horror thriller characters of all time she's on a lot of those lists of like um you know most scary child in a movie kind of um things so um the this role has kind of not really, not really typecast Patty McCormick, but has kind of echoed throughout her career. So in 95, um, she was in a low budget film called Mommy, in which she played um, a psychopathic mother. Um, and it's kind of considered like an unofficial sequel to this film. Um, there's a musical called Ruthless, where the first act... Oh, <laughs> dog's outside. Um... Uh, yeah, a musical called Ruthless, where the first act is inspired by this. Um, in 1993, there's a film called The Good Son, which is kind of inspired by this. Um, little fun fact. <laughs> I remember watching The Good Son and thinking, because, I mean, I was a little kid, and I was like, wow, I'm watching, like, a an adult kind of thriller. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a fairly tame film, but I thought I was very grown up at the time um it has Macaulay Culkin in it and he plays um a kid that kind of looks innocent but is actually quite um murderous and evil there's also a Lifetime movie called House of Deadly Secrets that's also kind of it's got Patty McCormick in it playing like sort of an adult um version of Rhoda so she's done lots of other things as well that are really good (laughs) but um this is something that's kind of, yeah, been like a defining moment. So it's kind of an interesting film from those perspectives. Um, in the original story, um, the ending is different. So uh, obviously I try not to spoil films too much, but I don't think the ending really, um, well, you're either going to watch it or you're not. But basically the ending um, in this one a few things happen and um, Christine starts to see what Rhoda is like and confronts her on some things and she sees that Rhoda is going to try and um, make her look crazy and people don't really believe Christine because the daughter is so perfect at this kind of innocent act and I think it's also kind of scary when you're watching it because um, you really get the sense that um, someone's not going to believe Christine because um, she's a woman, she's hysterical, um, you know, women are emotional and can't be trusted, like all these kinds of ideas. So she has no one to turn to for help. And so in the end, she sort of takes matters into her own hands. Um, so originally, the mother died and the daughter got away with everything. But the production code, which I have kind of talked about a couple of times, Uh, in these videos meant that crime could not pay. So that meant that anytime there was a criminal in a movie, um, they could do whatever in the middle of the film as, as long as it kind of wasn't too shocking, but they had to pay for the crime at the end. So, um, yeah, so the ending of this film is different to the, um, to the other, to the play and the, the novel. Um, also, with production code films, there wasn't a rating system. So with this film, they just kind of slapped an adults only tag on the poster and advertising. So, you know, kids couldn't watch it. But I mean, 
I don't know. I, I wonder, you know, what kids did see it in the cinema. Um, so I think one of the things outside of the performance that I enjoy about this film um, is a lot of it, because it's adapted from a play, a lot of it does take place in the home, which I think some people feel like that gives it like a, um, you know, obviously adapted from a play kind of a feel. But I kind of like it because the home at that point was the domain of the mother and it's her little world and you get to kind of see, you know, for me, it's kind of like, oh, 50s lounge room, a 50s kitchen. Like I quite like all that stuff. Um, but it's also gives you that sense of domesticity and something kind of being rotten underneath, which, you know, is obviously echoed by, um, the little girl Rhoda herself. Um, so it's a little kind of glimpse into another time. But also, I think taking place in that domestic sphere kind of gives a sense of a little bit of claustrophobia and some of those things. So I think it's something that works for the film rather than against it. Um, I really like the way Rhoda, as the kind of hysteria builds in this film, uh, the way that Rhoda just remains really calm and she kind of like justifies her actions. It's like she's more worried about getting in trouble um, than any kind of empathy because obviously as we come to know she is a psychopath so she doesn't really have any empathy but um, it's really kind of chilling sometimes the way she delivers a line and then it's kind of like can I go out and play now or whatever so um, yeah I think that's something that's quite fun when you watch this it's, it's creepy <laughs> I think another Thing that's leveled at this film um, sometimes it's compared a little bit to Mommy Dearest which um, I think is kind of unfair Mommy Dearest is definitely full you know full melodrama whereas this is more um, trying to tap into a sense of hysteria and isolation and I think it does that quite well. So it is melodramatic. It is a melodrama, but it's not, um, I guess it's just not a melodrama in a bad way. It's a melodrama in a good way. Uh, so that's The Bad Seed of 1956. If you haven't seen it and you like this kind of um, <laughs> creepy children kind of a film, um, you know who you are, people. Uh, definitely give this one a watch. It's... Um, it's quite fun. So yeah. Um, thank you for watching and, um, I'll be back soon with another video. Please, uh, feel free to subscribe if you're enjoying these and, um, 